Scotia. Ten square miles of private game reserve in the Eastern Cape of South Africa. Here, among the sprawling grassland and brush, some of Africa's most iconic beasts roam free, safe from the threat of poaching, predation, and other savage ends. It's winter now. Cold winds roll over the dusty savanna, rustling the thorny acacia bushes. Most insect life has died off or retreated into hibernation. However, a few invertebrate species can still be found if you look closely. One insect unaffected by the cooling temperatures is the snouted harvester termite, whose thousands of dome-shaped nests dot the landscape as far as the eye can see. Successive generations of termites construct these stony mounds with dirt and saliva slowly over time. Some of the largest mounds here in Scotia have been estimated to be over 3,000 years old. Black ants patrol the mound's surface, chasing off intruders in return for living space inside the nest. Their dark colour allows them to work in direct sunlight, something the pale termites cannot do. Each termite colony is comprised of hundreds of thousands of individual insects. Inside their labyrinthian complex, they grow fungus to feed themselves and their queen. The queen's chamber lies far beneath the mound, hidden from prying eyes. There's only one way to find it. Today, a team of game rangers and filmmakers are attempting to bisect a termite nest to expose the network of tunnels for future visitors to see. Scotia's owner, Justin Bean, shares his vision for the project. Okay guys, so we're about to embark on a little project that I've been wanting to do for quite some time here at Scotia. And it's nice that we can finally be involved with Africa Media to be able to film it. Basically what I've been wanting to do is do a cross section through a termite mound we're going to start digging away next to the termite mound and gradually work our way in towards the tunnels. So as we're digging in, it'll start to show the tunnels. Our aim is to get to probably around the center of the termite mound, but quite deep down. Our goal is to try and get to the queen's chamber. The jackpot would be to film her laying eggs and to see the workers coming in and carrying the eggs away. When the colony is threatened, termite soldiers swarm out in force. Trespassers are greeted with a spritz of formic acid. Despite their acidic arsenal, these insects are powerless to stop the rise and fall of shovels on their doorstep. Eventually they retreat deep underground to protect the workers, the young and their queen. Justin and his team aren't the only creatures tearing up the ground today. At the other end of the reserve, Scotia's oldest elephant is doing some digging of his own, uprooting the grass for a quick meal. His heavy kicks inadvertently turn up bugs and worms living in the shallow soil, a fact not lost on the glossy starling. In warmer months, the freshly turned earth would be crawling with delicious morsels. By this late in the winter, however, most insects have retreated too far underground to be seen. No snacks today. Finding food is top priority for every animal in the wild. Most animals keep themselves fed by consuming vegetation or by devouring other animals. Each day is a primal fight for nutrients, a cruel and brutal reality where, for many creatures, to live means to take a life. One creature, however, has found a way to live off another animal without harming it at all. The Argentine ant, an invasive species from South America, 
has flooded its range across the globe like no other species. Now solidly established in South Africa, they commandeer pre-existing spaces in which to anchor their colonies. In this case, these ants have taken up residence in an aloe plant, turning the spiky succulent into a high-rise apartment. Like their fungus farming termite cousins, Argentine ants have developed a unique system of agriculture on a minuscule scale. They are shepherds, tending a flock of aphids. Partial to sweet flavours, the Argentine ants milk the aphids with their antennae to produce droplets of honeydew, a substance that sustains the entire colony. The ants' territory is marked by vigilant border security. Foreign species are validated at checkpoints to ensure they pose no risk to the colony. This one is cleared for entry. The hoverfly, however, is a most unwelcome visitor. Like a hummingbird, the hoverfly requires a diet high in sugar to sustain its rapid flight. Aphid honeydew is a perfect source of sugar, but getting some won't be easy. Ant sentries patrol the aloe leaves, guarding their aphid flock from all invaders. If spotted, the hoverfly has two choices. Move away or risk a vicious nip from the ant's powerful jaws. Not a hard decision. When threatened by larger foes, Argentine ants defend their nests by swarming out to cover as much ground as possible, mandibles agape, ready to bite. Some ants stay behind to corral the aphids and, in some cases, to execute an emergency evacuation. The ants calm their frenzy when they discover the invading force was nothing more than a drop of honey. They remain on high alert nonetheless. Despite their affinity for the sweet things in life, these ants never let their guard down. To the north, Justin and his rangers continue digging into the termite nest, carefully looking for the queen's chamber. Someone must watch the horizon at all times. Lions roam free in the northern half of the reserve. ferments inside the chambers. Eventually, the team reaches the end of the tunnel network. They have found several large chambers, any one of which could be the Queen's. The window can now be installed. In preparation for the glass, the surface of the section is levelled and smoothed.
even after so much digging, these tunnels are still full of surprises. Look at this! No ways! You Get a camera it. here! Songolola! He was looking for one. A Shongolola, the giant African millipede. While curling into a tight spiral is the millipede's primary mode of defense, it avoids a lot of trouble by hiding out in termite tunnels. The millipede has two pairs of legs per segment, some 400 in all. These legs move in undulating waves, carrying the millipede along the dirt in search of food. Being a nocturnal creature and unaccustomed to the cold, this one finds its way back underneath the earth to emerge again on a warmer night. Meanwhile, the old elephant is still tilling up the dirt in search of dinner. In the process, he obliterates the root and tunnel systems that many invertebrates call home. But while the elephant's front half may not be so friendly to ground-dwelling insects, the other end leaves behind a rather unconventional consolation prize. Densely packed with leftover nutrients, Elephant dung provides the perfect hiding spot for many invertebrate species. While the outer crust protects against wind and sunlight, the slow decomposition produces a constant flow of heat inside, perfect for incubating eggs and larvae. Many young insects grow to maturity inside this sanctuary, well supplied with food and moisture. With so much to offer, it's no wonder so many species prefer the penthouse of pachyderm poo to alternative abodes. Back at the termite nest, Justin and his team have completed their excavations and prepare to install the pane of glass. It's a tricky process, Great care must be taken to ensure the glass stays in place without breaking loose or damaging the nest. Finally, the glass is set. Justin covers it with plywood to shield it from the sunlight, plunging the nest back into total darkness. With any luck, the termites will tunnel against the glass, giving visitors a clear view of the life subterranean. It has been three days since the glass was installed. Justin returns to check on the progress. Oh, really close it up. The termites have started closing the gap between their nest and the glass. It's no ant farm, but pockets of activity are still obvious. Here and there, a fragment of tunnel emerges from the dirt. The resident colony of black ants can be seen getting their affairs in order, tending to their eggs. The queen's chamber remains hidden. While the window into the termite nest fell short of expectations, it may only be a matter of time before the desired effect is achieved. Hopefully, future visitors to Scotia will be able to witness these coordinated little creatures in action and see how some of the smallest organisms provide a solid foundation for the rest of the ecosystem. The sun sets once again over Scotia, 
dipping one day deeper into winter. Yet even in these cold months, life is here and life is abundant. One has only to look closely, and perhaps move a little dirt, to see it.